Hey, it's Kevin Topol with JK on the Run, and yes, the MSI Wind has arrived today, as did the Google Chrome browser. That seems to be the big news, because nobody really cares about deliveries at my house, you know, other than the FedEx folks and me. See, I didn't even take this off yet. Jeez. There we go. Let's get that off. Ah, I've been really excited and anticipating this. Let's put it that way. This is the MSI Wind. I also got the six cell battery. I should be very clear about that. Let me take the battery out and show you. I did order this, paid for it through dynamism.com. And actually, it is an open box item. Um, I had originally ordered a brand new MSI Wind, and the folks at Dynamism had an open box for $20 less, and they actually threw in, can you believe this, a stowaway Bluetooth mouse, which will be great with this device since it has integrated Bluetooth, and the uh, hard-to-get iGo stowaway Bluetooth keyboard. Awesome. So that was a good deal, all for uh, $579. $579 for the wind in black with the six-cell battery. And I don't know, I really hadn't seen these six-cell batteries yet, so this was kind of interesting. Uh, you can see it's a little thicker. The original three cells would probably be like right here. And then we've got an additional three cells here. There's no LED uh, monitor on there. It's a 5200 milliamp battery. And let me pop it in, and I'll give you a quick walkthrough. That's all this is, just a quick walkthrough of the device. I've been playing with it for all of an hour, and that's because of uh, Google Chrome. I've been playing with that, in fact, on this device. So, all right, let's get that in there. All right, it's all locked. And I'll give you the tour. I'll give you the tour. Obviously, we've got you know the fancy shiny top, and we'll start in the back. You can see here in the back with the six cell battery. Let me turn it sideways. That it is nice and flush with the back of the device, and this little bump at the bottom actually elevates it above where the normal four feet would be, the, the device feet. You, know, you can see you've got two in the front, actually three. There's one in the middle. Uh, here and here. So what MSI did is they put little rubber feet on the bottom of the battery as well. So it sits and it's very nice. Let's get it lined up here. Do it this way. And it actually makes the typing angle, it tilts the device keyboard more towards you, which is fantastic. So uh, let's take a quick peek at what we've got here. See if I can get it. There we go. There's some good lighting. Uh, looks like a Kensington port here to lock it. We've got the AC input. This is just uh, venting here. Two USB ports. All right, nothing else there. Nothing in the front. It's pretty uh, normal. I will say right here on the bottom, I found the speakers to be one, two, right here. And let's go to the other side. We've got another USB port. We've got a card reader. Headphone mic jack, VGA out, which I have already made uh, use of. I hooked this device up, which runs XP. I hooked it up to the 1200, I'm sorry, the 1920 by 1200 monitor in front of me here, and clear as a bell. It was fantastic. Really, really nice. And then we've got our Ethernet jack right there. All right. I'll also say that there's some LEDs. We'll get to the, where are they? There they are. They're over here, but you'll see them lit up once we get going here. Let's open this bad boy up. Back it up a little bit. You can see, hopefully, that this is more of a matte finish on the inside of the screen. And that compares to the glossy finish that I really liked on the Acer Aspire 1. Um, but you know what? I'm liking the matte also. Um, it's kind of nice, diffuses that light. So I am liking that. So you've got your 10 inch screen. You've got a 1.3 megapixel webcam, which I have not taken advantage of just yet. You've got a microphone right here, built in. And a little bit of a bezel. This is about an inch right here, just to give you an idea. About one inch, and these are probably about a half inch. So um, because it's got the 10 inch screen size and a little bit of bezel, this device is a little bit wider than that Acer Aspire 1 I just returned. Um, I'm liking the size of this, though. The other one feels like it was a little too small now that I've had this for all of an hour. Uh, just my gut. Don't know yet. We'll see. We've got a power button up here. We've got the full keyboard, which I am really, really liking. Um, obviously, i, I got to have my right 
full size shift key. It's just a must for me. It's not for everybody, and that's fine. I have noticed though that the sacrifice to make the full size shift key is that the um, period, colon, and slash keys are a little bit smaller than you would normally want. Let's see if I can get those in there. Maybe you can tell, maybe you can't, but trust me, they're a little bit thinner than I'm used to. Still, it's okay. Hitting the function key gives you access to uh, bunches of functions right in the top function row. You can see those in blue. Um, those vary from uh, touchpad on and off, screen brightness, webcam, volume up and down, the turbo mode, which I had not made use of yet, uh, the Wi-Fi, or actually I should say the, the um, wireless connections. That includes Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because both are built into this device. That is another plus in my book over the Acer Spire simply because I may want to use a Bluetooth mouse, in which case I just got one for free out of this deal, so, you know, I'll use it. Uh, let's see, everything else is here. Got a dedicated Windows key, which I'm sure if you installed Linux would be similar. Uh, nice keyboard. I, I like the the space bar. <laughs> I, I use the space bar, obviously, a lot. It's in between every word, so it has to have a good feel, and this is probably one of the best space bars I felt on a small keyboard. It just it feels like and sounds like the spacebar on any normal keyboard, which is fantastic. Um, the mouse pad, I know that some folks were saying that uh, later models of this device don't use the Synaptics touchpad. This particular unit does, luckily, so uh, I'm good there. And you'll see it's got one mouse bar, which works for left and right clicking, so left here right here. It's really not too bad. It's not as bad as, say, the original Asus EPC701 that I had, that clicky-clacky, very plasticky feel. Um, that just was kind of, I don't know, it couldn't have been any flimsier, but it, it did the trick, obviously. This one makes a little noise, but it's not too bad. And I wish they would just put a dividing line and make two actual buttons instead of one on all these, but that's just personal preference. Um, also, I mentioned those LED lights. There they are. All you know, geez, eight or nine indicators there. Um, looks like there are eight. You've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, sleep, battery, uh, caps lock, numeric lock. Uh, looks like scroll lock and hard drive activity. So that's right. This does have a hard drive. I should really run through the specs real quick since I've given you the whole tour of the device at this point. Uh, this is the 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom processor, which is pretty common these days on the netbooks. Uh, it also comes with one gigabyte of RAM. It's uh, not too bad to upgrade to two from what I've seen. Excuse me while I throw on some ice here. I didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, what else? It's got an 80 gig hard drive. I think it's 5400 RPM, but I would have to double check and I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to say what it is. So I believe that it is. Uh, let's see. It comes with Windows XP Home. Uh, SP3. In fact, there is a recovery disk it comes with. Hopefully I won't need that. And also comes with a driver, utility, and manual disk. I did have to make use of the driver and utilities disk because basically out of the box this just came with Windows S XP SP3. So to get all the components working I had to install the drivers and the utility. Not a big deal. And maybe because that's just open box. So uh, it should already be pre-configured for you. What else, what else, what else? Um, I guess that's probably about it as far as the device. So you probably want to see how quick it boots. That's a big deal to a lot of people. Uh, I agree. It's important to see. Oh, you know what? Before I even go there, something I really like. When I use these netbooks, I'm usually sitting almost over top of them. And the screens tend to not always go back far enough. This, watch this. It's not 180 degrees, I'd probably say it's about 150 degrees. So I can sit here almost on top of the keyboard and have that screen still facing me, which is fantastic. I like that so far. I certainly, from an ergonomic standpoint, don't want to be crouched down over this, but um, I've got lots of wiggle room here to just sit there over top of it if I need to. So, all right, I will fire it up. Um, and that way you can count along and time it if you want. I did time it, it came out to be about 45 seconds for a boot up Windows XP. I'm going to hit the button 3, 2, 1.
And then you can see the green indicator light somewhere. Where is it? Oh, there it is. So she's a going. That screen takes up about eight seconds right there. There's probably a fast boot where I can get rid of that. And here we go with Windows XP's splash screen. You know, I don't boot up my devices that often. I tend to use sleep mode quite a bit, so this is not that important to me. It's important, but sleep and, and sleep and resuming are, are more important to me. So you can see the, hey, you don't have any antivirus software installed is popping up. Yep, I know that. And I can move the mouse. I'm good there. You know, I mean, it's still, you know, getting started here, but... You know, it's almost usable, and let me just take a quick peek at something. It should, let me just close that. A loon. This is the 10, 24 by 600 screen. Nice looking screen. You probably can't tell on this quick little video, but it's it's nice. Probably not, well, I was about to say, probably not the same viewing angles of the Acer Aspire 1, but pretty darn good. I mean, you can at least make out the happy little clouds over there. That's not so bad. All right, it's hiding my inactive icons. That's all well and good. It's not connected. Wireless is unavailable, and that's because I didn't turn it on. So bear with me as I hit function F11 and turn the Wi-Fi on. Now, I've noticed a comment or two people asking me about the, uh, the Wi-Fi signal and issues. Uh, I haven't used it enough, quite honestly, to, to tell you anything about that. I know that when I turn the Wi-Fi on, as I did just now, it is now connecting, and it just did connect to my Wi-Fi network. Okay, so I'm now connected, and I can go online. Uh, this came with IE6, obviously. I used IE6 to get IE7 through Windows Update. I used IE7 to get Chrome. I then used Chrome to get Firefox. So we've got them all on here, other than Safari <laughs> through Windows. Um, everything is working just fine. Um, I don't don't know if it matters to you what we use, just for heck of it. Just because it's a Google Chrome day, I will tap. Google Chrome right now, and here she comes, uh, I can't remember, yeah, it's going to load up, check on the run, there it is, and looks like it's done already, so, uh, it renders very fast, you know, that's partially Google Chrome, so, uh, I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary with any of the browsers, it runs really well, quite honestly, and, and I, I look at this, for me, as a heavy-duty browsing machine for consuming and creating content. Yeah, I might put apps on there. I mean, I've got 76 gig of space on there, but I'm not an apps guy right now. <laughs> that may change, but um, there's plenty of room on here. Uh, let's see. What could we do? What could we do? Actually, I've been to Hulu because I've been catching up on some shows. I really like that show Life, and I missed it all last season. So there's all 11 episodes of life on Hulu, so let's go check that out. I think September 9th or 29th they start they start that again. Uh, let's go to browse TV. I mean, I'm just kind of playing here. I'll show you some video though, just for kicks. Let's go to life. Really interesting show. It would suck to be put away in prison for 12 years, wrongly accused, but hey, that's American drama for you. All right. Let's go to life, blah, 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 there's got to be a, here we go, season one. Life is not available in the 420p higher res, I noticed that, so it may not be the best test for everybody out there, but let me, it's loading the video, I'll even put it in full screen. Looks pretty darn good. Looks really good. I've noticed when I find a, a 480p show, it's just starting to drop frames. But the Intel Atom with the graphics chipset from Intel here, it's not bad. It's really not bad at all. Better than I expected. Better than I expected. Um, you know, I mean, I could sit here and test a gazillion things in the browser because, again, it's a netbook. You know, that's really where you should be, but you've got the option to, heck, you want to run full clients of the Office Suite or whatever, whatever. 
that's completely up to you. Um, but I'm definitely impressed so far. Definitely impressed. I said I was going to uh, talk about sleep and resume because that's pretty important to me and hopefully it is to some other people. And I'm just going to hit the button. Three, two, one. And it's now in sleep, so maybe four seconds. And let's hit the button again. Three, two, one. And we're back. And Wi-Fi is connecting. I'm just checking just because people have said there might be some issues. And it is connected to Wi-Fi. So, you know, you're back up and running in a couple seconds, and then you get your Wi-Fi back a few seconds after that. That's, you know, that's fine for me. Um, again, six cell battery on this guy. A lot of people, you know, purchase with the, um, the three cell battery. And I really wanted the six. Granted, this is just an indicator. I'm just going to tell you what it says here in Windows when I hover over the battery. It says, actually, let's double click. It says that I've got 89% left on the battery, and it's estimating a runtime of 5 hours and 12 minutes. We know that's not accurate. I understand that. I'm not going to sit here and say, I've got 5 hours, 12 minutes. It tells me it does. It must be 5 hours and 12 minutes. That's not necessarily the case. What I'm going to do is, um, over the next couple of days, I'm going to put this through the paces with Windows XP. One of the tests I always do, I'll always do a crystal mark benchmark, and I will also do the battery eater test. Battery eater tells you what the minimum expected runtime is of a machine because it stresses the machine nonstop. It just stresses it until the battery dies. So I will do that. I'm estimating with Wi-Fi on, screen brightness around, I'll say 50%. Well, let's take a quick peek. I'm going to say I should get over five hours with this device. Um, let's just take a quick peek at screen brightness. I can mod this. See, I mean, it wasn't even halfway. It's pretty bright, nice and bright. Uh, let's bring it down to. That's exactly halfway. Plenty bright. I could even drop it down another two notches and still work and be happy. Um, that's just me. That's personal preference. I'd rather do that to save on some battery life. That's just my, you know, my personal preference. So, um, that's probably about all I want to show you right now. Because quite frankly, I want to go play with Chrome and some other things and start doing some benchmarks. But uh, if you have questions, please drop a note here, and I'll do my best to answer them as I always try to do. There was already a question from Greg. Greg had said, "How hot does it get?" And I can tell you that. The hottest part of it is actually, this is not good in my opinion, is the trackpad. I can feel the most heat right on the trackpad, not to the left of it, not to the right of it, right on the trackpad. Is it really hot? No, it's warm, not uncomfortably warm, but it's noticeably warm. Yeah, how's that for accuracy? Um, the keys, I feel a little bit of heat in there. Um, I feel the fan right now. feels pretty good actually, kind of hot here. Um, one thing I do notice, or don't notice, is I don't hear the fan. The Acer Aspire 1, I really didn't notice it until Barb had said, what's that noise? What's that noise? Where is it? Well, it was the fan of the Acer Aspire 1. Some units seem to be a little whinier than others. Um, I don't know. This, I hear almost no fan noise. And you wouldn't know it had a fan, to be quite honest. So, I'll do my usual. I'll be playing with Skype and uh, reading ebooks and surfing the web and creating content, and doing videos and watching life and all kinds of other stuff. So just uh, drop me a note and I will do my best, as I said, to, to answer those questions on the MSI Win with a 6 cell battery. Really liking this. Nice build quality, good size, good feel. I'm really liking this. I don't know if it's worth the extra money over the Acer, but I'm really liking it. All right, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.